where to upload your production. We have already covered three different ways for you to upload your production to the internet for it to be distributed to your students. We're going to cover the same three options, but we're going to go through a little bit more details this time around so you know what is available for you and what are the basic differences between the different options. First, I'm going to cover YouTube. And probably the first thing that I would like to say about YouTube is that it's one of the best options because it creates different versions of your video so they can be available to different people with different bandwidths. And that is very important because you don't have to worry about making different videos for those who have high speed internet access and those who have a fairly low speed internet access. YouTube does this automatically and as you probably already know one of the things that YouTube allows you to do in this area over here is to change the quality of reproduction of your video and so far I have been recommending that we use this type of export so you are at the lowest high definition quality but if you have people accessing your videos from locations in which they cannot access the high definition quality one, well, they're going to have different options that they can choose from. And that is something very good about YouTube because we don't have to do that work. That is done automatically as you upload your video files to the system. One of the important features about YouTube is to set up different permissions for your videos. And you can decide if your videos are going to be private. And this means that you can only watch them or you can send individual email invitations to different people so they can watch them privately. They can be unlisted and that means that, well, if someone has the link to the video, they're going to be able to watch it but that video is not going to appear anywhere else. You need to have that link in order to access the video. And finally, you have the option for public. This means that your video is going to be indexed by different search engines and people are going to be able to find your video by doing searches on the internet. The way that you can control that is by going to the individual video that you have uploaded to YouTube clicking this info and settings button and in here you're going to find the different options for the permissions in your video. The next part that I would like to cover is the license of your video. Normally YouTube is going to upload your video with a traditional, I'm going to click on advanced settings now, with a traditional standard YouTube license. And you can see what that means over here, but basically you're telling people that the video is copyrighted to you and that you do not support usage of this video without your permission. Another thing that you can do is to select a Creative Commons license with attribution. What this means is that people are going to be able to use your video as long as they give you credit. And by doing this, you allow people to remix your video, build upon it, or use it just as a reference to build new content. And all of that is fair use of your video if you have this license activated. Most of the videos that I've been producing for these tutorials have right now a YouTube license but when I'm done producing all of them, I'm going to change them to Creative Commons Attribution. And the main purpose is to allow you to do anything that you will like with these videos at a later time. And I think that that would be a better use of the videos than if I want to restrict their use. The next part that I'm going to tackle is annotations. And in here, you're going to see that I have several options, enhancements of the video, which normally I do not apply because we're doing screen capturing videos. You can add music to your videos. Normally, I don't recommend to do that unless it is very, very low. It can be very distracting. And then we have the annotations button. In this button, you can click there and you're going to have the ability to go to different parts of your video. I'm going to let mine play for a moment so you can see it on the screen. In this case, 
and at any given moment you can add an annotation and an annotation could be a speech bubble a note a title a spotlight and so on so i can click there and i am gonna be able to include here some text So that might become handy for you at some moment in time. In my case, I do all of this work before in Camtasia, but I don't discard using these at some point in time. We also have closed captioning in YouTube that happens in an automated way. And if you're using the PC version of Camtasia, you also have this tool inside your program. And if you have the Mac version of Camtasia, this might be a good option to do automated closed captioning of your videos. And I have already covered that in the closed captioning section over here in usability considerations. Finally, playlists. With playlists, you can provide a single resource to your students where all of your videos are going to be included. This is an example of a playlist. And normally a playlist is created by selecting an individual video, Hello. going to the information and settings button. And in here, you're going to have this option over here where you can click and this drop down menu is going to appear and you can select a playlist or you can create a brand new playlist for a new set of videos. And this is going to create a fairly good resource for your videos to be all included in a single resource that your students can access very well that is all of the things that i wanted to say about youtube when it comes to google drive you're going to have more or less the same options that you have in youtube your videos are also going to adjust to the available bandwidth so for example if i come to this screen and i open this video over here You're also going to have on this side of the video the ability to change the bandwidth in which it's going to be played. As you can see, there are less options when you go this way, but you can also select from two different ones, and that should be good enough. In the same way that it happens in YouTube, you can establish if you would like your videos to be private, unlisted, or public. And that happens in different ways, and I'm going to show you how that takes place. One way of doing it is by right clicking on each one of the videos and from here you can go to share and in share you can click in this part and you will get a shareable link. This means that if you distribute this link to anybody your video is going to play for the person who has that link. In other words if this link is transferred from one person to the other all of those people are going to be able to watch your video. This is the same as having a video unlisted. The way that you can undo this is by clicking here and turning that off and it will not be shared anymore. In the same way that you can do this in YouTube, you can also specify here if you would like to share your video with a specific person and no one else. And that person is going to have to be logged in into Google in order to be able to watch that video. So if you pursue this way, it is the same as providing your videos in a private fashion. Finally, you can go over here. I'm going to close this and I am going to be able to turn this on by clicking on more. And I am going to select the option to be public on the web. This, as it happens with YouTube, is going to allow search engines to grab my video and to be offered in the search results of anyone who searches the internet. So it will be pretty much a public video from that moment on. So you can click here, click on save, and then it will become public. One of the benefits of providing this list in this way is that you can put everything into a folder and in the same way that it would happen with a playlist in YouTube you're going to be able to share entire folders with your students and in order to do that you will need to come to this drop down arrow over here 
and you are going to be able to share your entire folder with different people following the same permission levels that you have for individual files. So therefore you can share your entire folder and one of the things that people are going to be able to do once that they get access to your files inside the folder is to open them and then come over here and download the files. This is helpful if your students have only access to the internet at certain moments and they will still like to watch your videos at a later time. So they can download your videos and then watch them on their own from their computer. Very well. And finally, how to do things with a traditional server. I think that everything that I tackled in the previous lessons is good enough. The biggest benefit of putting these in a traditional server is that you're going to enable the interactive table of contents. And this interactive table of contents really helps navigate the content of your video in a different way. So that could be a benefit from uploading it to a traditional server. One of the big disadvantages of doing this is that your video will always play in the same quality to everybody because you will only upload one version of your video to your server. Having said that, screen capturing technologies allow to create very small video files that even students with slow connections are going to be able to play.